All right, so I'm gonna show you how to field quarter a, a deer. Uh, first, you need to have a deer. Yeah, first thing you need is a deer, which we have. <laughs> and uh, I started doing this about three years ago, and I've left my deer wagon at the house. I don't <laughs> use it anymore. Make sure this is legal in your state before you do this. But what we've got is, a, this is a military Alice pack. I picked it up at Army Surplus for about 30 bucks. And I hauled a lot of deer out with it, and hog, uh, which I think I posted that earlier. Um, what I do is, you, uh, a backpack will work, but this is ample room to put a deer in. A lot of this pockets you could. Yeah. Right, and to store it. This is all I use it for, is, is just this. Another thing you need is a good knife. Uh, I wish it, I knew how many I'd cleaned with that knife, but this is a, a uh, swing blade by out, uh, Hunter's Edge. Don't cut your I'm not, but that's, we're gonna show you how that works in just a minute. But that's the swing blade. Any knife will do, but this is better, and I'll show you why in a minute. Do you have any suggestions for types of knives, like any? any um, I, I like brands? this. I like this one. I highly recommend it. Okay. Um, I don't. I've had it many years and cleaned a lot of deer with it. In my opinion, you can you can field quarter one with a regular knife. I like it because of this, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay. Another thing that I keep with me is my. Rate a sharpener, and it's just a disc sharpener, and I always sharp my knife before I start. And it, by the time I get to the other side of the deer, I normally hit it just to touch it up a little bit. So that's always good. I keep it in the bag um, right there. Another thing which I suggest is rubber gloves. Um, these are vinyl gloves, but just Keeps things yeah. clean. What I don't about, mind getting deer blood on me, but I, I'll try to keep them. What clean. about trash bags? Do you have yes, any suggestions? Yes, trash bags. Make sure you get the unscented kind and make sure that they're sturdy enough. I've had some cheap plastic of garbage bags, and as you can see here, once you get the deer in there, and the whole deer will fit in that, but I've double bagged it just to be safe because when I pull it out at the processor to take it in, I don't want it falling out on the ground. So that's just a little safety deal but this is all i do is i just stick it in there are we gonna cut its head off slowly oh yeah okay. i just stick it in there yeah and that's another thing too so you can you can haul your head out on that thing too okay so have it in there like that and then next thing we'll be showing you is your initial cuts okay, okay. so First thing I'm gonna do, and I can't emphasize this enough, the guy that I saw do this, I've talked to him, uh, Mr. Warren Womack, you need to go look at his video, probably be better than this one, but he's the one that kind of helped me through this whole process. But anyway, he told me, uh, which I think is very valuable, is do it the same way every time and get your own system. It, it's basically the same thing, everybody's doing the same thing, but once you get it, get doing the same thing it makes it a lot easier um i always start on the deer's left side again that's just you could start on the right it doesn't make any difference but i always start on the left just to just to keep it the same what is that, is that a tick, tick. Oh, that's mm. a deer tick yeah but anyway the first thing i'm gonna do is i take it out here about the nape of the neck and i just shave that hair back Give him a good haircut. Yeah, give him a good haircut right there. You don't want to cut to the to the skin. If you do, it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. The object is to try to keep as much hair off of it as you can. But off once the you meat. yes, once you get that started, and now you, that's about all you need. You can make it bigger if you want to. But we're gonna come back to it. All right. It's about that. And if you get hair on it, don't worry. I mean. People get too hung up on hair on the meat. In my opinion, it doesn't make really much difference. Anyway, once I get this initial cut made, we use the swing blade. Swing blade. I stick it right in there. 
And this is why I like the swing blade. You're not sawing down. Right. And I probably need to touch my swing blade up a little bit. There we go. Get to run it. See, here we go. Can you see it on this side? Get over here behind me. That's funny. All right, you see? Now I'm running it down the backbone. Extra. Right, and you're staying out of the meat. That smells so good. Mm -hmm. Alright, now once I get down the backbone, I'm gonna go right around the, the hind quarter. That's right. Just like that. And if you come over here and show you, I come around right the edge of that white hair. Like, it's like cutting into a line. Right, exactly. Right. And that's good enough for me. Yeah. Now, here's what you do. You take uh, your knife, turn it back around. And you can start just, this will peel real easy. But look, you just, work it down. Now you can do this too. Oh. It's so weird. I'm going to stick it back so into the... I'm going to take that swing blade back again and pull it down on this side. We've got that... And follow the that line. That to follow the line. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to switch it back to my blade. Okay. The main thing is don't, don't let the hair... Touch the meat as much as you can. But it's what okay I, if it doesn't, because it's well, you want, You're right. And you're going to hopefully wash it. But you don't want to, you just want to hold it back. And there's your there's bullet. There's the bullet. And that's what we thought it was. So, and you just peel it. There's the bullet. Yep. And see, Dang. no exit hole. Exit hole on the inside. I kind of messed that up. That's all right. We're not going to get that part all right, so once we get this done, I'll show you. It's, it's the whole process is just this, working it all out. Next phase, I'll show you what we'll do next, so. All right, so you can see we got the whole side of the deer skint down. Got all the hair off on the hind quarter. Now what you want to do, I put a little pressure on it, but I come right in here. And you want to get that joint and take a little bit of finding. The more you do it, the easier it gets. What is, is that? That's really dark blood. Mm -hmm. Come up around. We always clean it when we get back to the house. Go around that like that right there. So as well. Okay. All right, you see that ball joint there? This might have too much blood in it. <laughs> nah. Just cut that off. Does it take a little work for a ball joint? or? No, nah, once you find it. Your leg's off. See? That's it. <laughs> you want to leave the front, I mean the back leg on. Now. What you can do here, this is a good thing. Put your hand in there behind the tender. And you can clean this off. It's not that big a deal. There's a swamp out there. You can go clean up. <laughs> oh, yeah. The swamp works great. So, what you want to do now, you want to put the hind quarter in the bag. You want to hit, there's a joint right there, too. Always get it over the bag. So you're just gonna take that leg off? Yep, I'm gonna take that down through here. That joint, see that joint right there? Mm -hmm. Once you get the, there, there you go. Cut that off. 
And there's a hind quarter. One hind quarter. Yep. Four Man, more. Once you, get, once you get that done, pull easy. your sack up like this. Kind of get it and it'll start. You see what I'm talking about? Now. It'll start to form a shape. Yeah, exactly. Decent. And it'll stay in the bag better. Yeah. All right. Now, like that's what I say. Yeah. Now, okay. All right, next, we'll come back to you on the next one. We're going to do the front shoulder next. All right, now we're going to take a front shoulder. And you don't have to save leg, or you can, the leg can stay on there. You're going to take it loose here. At this joint, you're going to go right around this muscle here. The first thing you're going to do is get through to that. Can you kind of like snap it off like turkey's butt? Yeah, you shouldn't have to snap it off. If you can find the, again, this goes back to joint. joint. It's like skinning ducks. You gotta do it precisely. Yep. Well, that front shoulder's kind of easy. Yep, it's not hard. Again, my my thing that I have to keep practicing is where I cut this joint at, because I want to try to save as much meat as I can. And I, the more you do it, the easier it gets. But again, you gotta do it a bunch of times to get the hang of it. All right, here's front shoulder. See that knuckle, that's where we took the tendon off. I don't wanna bore you with all that. So, because again, it takes practice. I'm no expert. And I'm still learning every time I do one. Are we going to get the backstraps out? You're going to take them out right now, sir. So. That's my favorite part. Yeah, favorite piece of meat. So you, you, all you do on the back strap, which is the loin, is... The tender loin. This one right here, which you can see here. You start up here, and you want to follow that backbone. Like a duck. Like a duck, that's right. Or a turkey or whatever you want to do. Yeah. Whatever your inclination is. Or kind of like a fish. Yeah, you can do a fish too. That loin's all the way here to there. And that's some good eating. Mm-hmm. Especially when we grill it on our smoker. Mm-hmm. good. And then you, we'll sometimes stuff them with cream cheese. Oh, yeah. Making me hungry. I eat them with sour cream though. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the back strap again. You can start where you started up here. Mm -hmm. You want to cut. Some big old tendon. Mm -hmm. Cut right down there. So what is the average width of a tenderloin? Uh, it all depends on the deer. I'd, I'd probably say, well, you've seen tenderloins come out this year. Yeah. This is a bigger one because of the deer. Yeah. But the ribs. The ribs aren't any good is what our process is. Well, more trouble than worse. I've never actually tried deer ribs before. I haven't. You think they'll be good? You think they'd be good? I guess. Depends on who does them, I guess. I reckon. So do you have to kind of get, just do it to get better at it? Or? Oh yeah, this is just like anything you, news, you gotta, you gotta practice. Practice makes perfect. All right, so once you get it started. It's... So if you wanna practice, you gotta hunt. <laughs> you gotta kill. You gotta kill. Which we saw a lot, you know, a lot of deer on the way. Yeah, they were moving. Morning. 
This takes a little longer to do just because of well, bone. I want to get it as good as I can. On a young deer, I mean on a some deer that'll just pull right out. Other, other times they, a little bit aggravating. Probably need to sharpen my knife a little bit there. Been cutting with them tendons and right. Um, there she back strip. So the main thing about this is you want to avoid guts, right? So as much as possible. Sometimes you're going to get them. But that right there is the inner loin. And we get them because that's some good eating. Mm -hmm. They make good roast. Mmm. make good anything. But you just cut it on that side and they're so tender. You pull them right out. I'm not leaving that meat. They're more strings of meat than they are anything. Yeah, but they're tender. I know, and they're so good. Can't you like make steaks and roast out of them? Oh yeah. All right. And there they go, the guts. <laughs> There's your inner loin. Now. That's a really small. Yeah, but it's like filet mignon when you cook it. Yeah. All right, now I'm gonna show you what you do after you, we're done on this side of the deer. Okay. Next, a little too small for us. For neck meat. Uh, what we're gonna do is this. You take this. Cover them up. Cover them back up like that. And flip him over. Flip him over. Flip him over. Oh, his neck. There we go. And you start on the other side, so just to repeat the process. Yep. That's how you do it.